Hey guys, my name is Kirtan and welcome to my channel Physiology at Once. In this channel, I will be uploading videos about physiology which is easy to understand and you can replicate the same in the board examinations. For the notes, I will be uploading it in the telegram channel. The link for the notes and the channel is in the description. So let's talk about today's topic blood groups and blood transfusion. What is blood group? It is a classification of red cells based on the antigens present on the cell membrane. Similarly, the corresponding antibodies will be absent in the plasma according to the Lanstinus law, which we will be talking later. The antigens are also called as agglutinogens and antibodies are called as agglutinins. The most commonly used systems for the blood transfusions are ABO and RH systems. Let's talk about them. Under the ABO system, they are again divided into agglutinogens and agglutinins. In the agglutinogens, they are antigen A and antigen B. They are present on the cell membrane. For the group A, antigen A is present. For the group B, antigen B is present. In the group AB, both are present. And in the group O, neither of them is present. In the agglutinins, antibody A and antibody B are present in the plasma. As I told before, the corresponding antibodies will be absent in the plasma. So the other antibody will be present. So you can see it here, in the group A, anti B is present rather than anti A. In the group B, anti A is present. In the group AB, none of the antibodies are present. And in the group O, both antibody A and antibody B are present. Let's talk about the Lanstinus law. If a particular agglutinogen is present on the cell membrane of an individual, the corresponding agglutinin must be absent in its plasma. This is an important law in the case of blood transfusions in the ABO system. If ever the corresponding agglutinin is present in the plasma of an individual, it may lead to agglutination reactions and cause severe hemolysis in the person. Let's talk about the RH system. It, it was first described by Landsteiner and Weiner in the rhesus monkeys. In this system, there are two blood groups, RH positive and RH negative. The RH positive, 95-98% to people in India have RH positive blood group and 2-5% to in India have RH negative blood group. The RH positive means D antigen is present on the blood and in the RH negative blood group, D antigen is absent in the RBC. So it is an autosomal dominant factor. So when the genotype is DD or DD, it will be RH positive because it is an autosomal dominant trait and it will only be RH negative if the genotype is DD, small d. Now let's talk about the RH incompatibility. It occurs when RH negative individual receives blood from the RH positive patient. During the first time, there will be no immediate reaction because there will be no antibodies present in the RH negative individual against this RH positive blood. But when the blood is transferred to the RH negative person from the RH positive person, the antibody starts developing and it takes at least 4 to 5 months for the full development of the antibodies in this RH negative individual. And then during the second time, there will be a massive reaction of mismatch transfusion in this patient and cause severe hemolysis. The most common example of this case is in the pregnancy of and is also called as erythroblastosis fetalis. So now let's see about this case erythroblastosis fetalis. Erythroblastosis fetalis. First one, etiopathogenesis. Etiopathogenesis is nothing but the cause of the disease. So, hemolytic disease of the newborn is due to the RH incompatibility. During the placental suppression, in the first pregnancy, small amount of fetal blood leaks into the metallal circulation. This forms the formation of anti-RH agglutinins in the mother. In the subsequent pregnancies, the anti-RH agglutinins enter the fetal circulation and causes hemolysis. So now let's talk about the clinical features. The first one is anemia. It is caused due to the severe hemolysis in the fetus. Hemolytic jaundice. It is also caused due to the severe hemolysis and causes the more number of bilirubin in the blood. 
and up to 25 mg percent of bilirubin or more is seen in severe cases. Generalized edema. It is caused due to hemolysis and hypoproteinemia due to which the fluid enters into the extracellular matrix. Kernic telex. It is a major neurologic syndrome. It is neurotoxic because the bilirubin escapes into the brain crossing the blood brain barrier and sits on the basal ganglia. In adults, it is not seen because the blood brain barrier is strong in adults. But in case of fetuses, the blood brain barrier is not so strong and bilirubin goes inside the brain and sits in the basal ganglia, which causes many more major motor deficits. Extramedullary hemopoiesis Due to the severe hemolysis, more number of erythroblasts are produced to compensate for the loss of blood. So the number of erythroblasts are increased in the blood. So therefore it's called erythroblastosis fetalis. Let's talk about the treatment of erythroblastosis fetalis. Intrauterine fetal transfusion It is done through the intraperitoneal route and it is done in major cases like severe hemolysis jaundice. Exchange transfusion. In this case, the full blood is exchanged, removing the sensitized red blood cells, antibodies present against, against the red cells and many more such products inside the blood of the fetus. Phototherapy. The excess of bilirubin is photooxidized and made non-toxic due to the presence of light in the case of phototherapy. So now let's talk about the prevention. Administering a single dose of anti-RS antibodies following the first delivery. It is a must in the case of RH negative mother and RH positive child. Or it can also be done passive immunization. Fact box. About 50% of the fetuses and newborns with erythroblastosis fetalis have mild hemolysis and do not require treatment. So only 50% of the cases are severe and require treatment. Edema in this disease is also called hydrops fetalis. Now let's talk about the next subtopic of this video, blood transfusion. It is the process of transferring blood and its products into a person's circulation intravenously. It is used for various medical conditions to replace lost components of the blood. The most commonest example of this blood transfusion is the blood donation which you might have at least done once in a lifetime. The cross matching. This is a mandatory test to be done before a blood transfusion. It is done mainly to eliminate any case of mismatching. Mismatching may lead to severe agglutination reaction and hemolysis in the patient. Cross matching is again divided into two types, major and minor. The major cross matching. In this case, the cells of the donor are matched against the plasma of the recipient. Since the agglutinogen is highly reactive, it can produce agglutination reactions even in the low concentration. Therefore, it is more important to match donor's agglutinogen against the recipient's agglutinin. Coming to the minor cross-matching, in this case, the donor's plasma is matched against the recipient's red cells. Since the donor plasma is highly diluted, agglutinin of donor plasma cannot damage the cells of the recipient. It is not much important, however, it is done to check the full compatibility of the blood transfusion. Hazards of blood transfusion It is mostly caused due to the human errors. The first one is due to the mismatch transfusion. In this case, there is severe agglutination and hemolysis reactions. The complications depend upon the degree of the hemolysis reactions. The complications are shivering and fever, hemoglobinemia, Hemoglobinemia is due to the increased destruction of the red blood cells and decreased hemoglobin in the blood. Hemolytic jaundice, acute renal failure. Renal failure occurs due to the hemoglobin content in the renal tubules which blocks the renal tubules and causes renal failure. Toxic substances produced by the lysed red blood cells. and the circulatory shock. Hyperkalemia is nothing but the increased level of potassium in the blood which causes cardiac arrest. This is due to the faulty techniques of giving blood. Thrombophlebitis. It is seen in the patient 
receiving the blood frequently air embolism in this case the air is trapped inside the blood and can cause severe damage by blocking the blood to the lungs due to massive transfusion it is caused when 10 units of blood is transferred in 24 hours or the whole blood in the body is transferred within 24 hours this causes severe cardiac problems febrile reaction in these cases the patient suffers from cold and rigor due to the pyrogens from the donor's blood allergic reactions the patient suffers from itching and many allergic reactions due to the donor's blood transmission of diseases many diseases are transferred from the diseased person through the blood like hiv aids syphilis hepatitis and many more so that's it for today i hope you like this video and please share comment and like this video if you found this video informative and subscribe for more easy and understandable physiology videos like this thank you